Hey, Mushroom Nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I'm spending some time in my local park with some glorious blusher mushrooms in the Amanita genus. I've got two species to share with you. Uh, first of all, I have this nice, beautiful, sort of brownish, warty fellow, and he has uh, a partial veil, which is basically this protective layer of tissue you can see, and it's starting to slough off and it will make a really cool ring on the stem. I'm talking about that feature first because it is so delicate that it may fall off before I describe the other identification features for this lovely abundant mushroom. All right, so Amanita mushrooms, if you are a forager and you are new, you need to get to know it from a safety perspective. There are a lot of species that are dangerous uh, and there are a lot of species that are completely harmless. And then there are a lot of species that are like edibility unknown, but smells like rotting meat. And from, again, a safety perspective, but also from understanding the uh, different features of typical cap and stem mushrooms, Amanitas are just a great genus to learn about because they have kind of a little bit of everything that a mushroom might have. And also will teach you how to collect a mushroom in the field uh, so that, you know, you have the whole thing and you can actually tell what it is. But the distinguishing feature for blusher mushrooms, as that common name implies, is that they, uh, regardless of what color their cap is, and, uh, you know, that ranges from sort of this medium brown, oftentimes really, uh, you know, pale and white. And regardless of what that uh, cap color is, you start to see these sort of reddish mahogany stains. And this is particularly pronounced when the mushroom gets rained on, but almost always over the course of time, you'll see this really kind of cool, sometimes subtle and sometimes very, very vibrant explosions of uh, this reddish or rubescent color. Uh, and another thing that you can observe that is, uh, you know, quite helpful as far as that blushing reaction is the base of the mushroom. This one, it's a little fainter. So I'm going to find, I have one that's really, oh, here we go. So this one's a little bit older and I collected it earlier today. It's taken some bug damage, but as you can see, it is just like red, red, red. And the base of the stem of blusher mushrooms is also instrumental for identifying them uh, because their characteristics are really um, unique from other mushrooms that look similar to them. So I am holding a beautiful, am I, I keep saying I am holding a beautiful mushroom. I find all mushrooms to be beautiful. Even, even the most gross, ugly ones are hilarious and that's beauty in and of itself. All right, so this is a yellow blusher mushroom, and uh, the scientific name here is uh, Amanita flavorubens. For the blusher mushrooms that I was talking about, the uh, best thing to do with the brownish ones and whitish ones, they fruit throughout the year uh, in the eastern U.S. and a lot of different parts of the country and parts of the world, but in the eastern U.S., uh, the best thing to do is call them Amanita rubescens. Um, um, and there are a couple of either provisional or variants of that species. So Amanita rubescens, and then we have a sort of like evolution of American blushers. And so like there is acknowledgement that there's a white one. There is acknowledgement that this thing is different from the white thing, but we're trying to figure it out. You may also call it, uh, you may, you have my permission to call it Amanita Amera rubescens species group. Uh, I think that's excessive because it's really just specifying. It's like we are talking about American blusher mushrooms and we're still figuring out exactly where they fall taxonomically. That said, like these are really wonderfully loved edible mushrooms around the world for a long, long time. So, you know, even though we're still hashing out the genetics, these are um, wonderful mushrooms to learn. And if you're interested in sort of more advanced foraging, I would uh, encourage you to get into them. But I am holding this yellow one to give you an overview of the most important features besides that blushing for identifying a blusher mushroom. Uh, and they're in a species section, like the Amanita uh, genus has different sections that it's sliced up to, uh, into, and this is in section Valley Day. Anyway, 
the characteristics that are really important here is that you have instead of like a big bulb or cup of tissue at the base of the stem what you have is just sort of like well it is a little bit of a bulb but some mushrooms have a really big almost like root like thing al almost obscenely carrot like so uh you know the bases of blushers are enlarged and uh let's see here i have a young or a um a stumpy one that's a good example too uh, so what you'll see is uh, at the base of a blusher, not a lot of features or ornamentation, uh, and also oftentimes a little bit of this sort of reddish color showing up. Another thing that's really common and I love to look for is it often has these vertical chisels, and that's just kind of neat and geometrical for me. But I wanna highlight this uh, yellow one in particular because it's a little bit of a trickster. Uh, there are a lot of people who are interested in uh, mushrooms that have um, warts and are highly colorful, so Amanita muscaria. In the Eastern United States, we have a highly and hotly contested yellow form of Amanita muscaria and I'm not gonna even go there, but I will say that this mushroom bears a lot of resemblance to uh, your various muscaroid uh, mushrooms. And the reason I say that is that, you know, they have a lot of the same characteristics. So not all blushers, but most of them have warts of some kind on top. And that in the case of blushers is often really ephemeral and powdery. Uh, and in the case of an Amanita muscaria or a lot of its relatives, those are actually kind of more floofy and um, sometimes can be kind of difficult to rub off. And they're white in color in most cases. And again, you know, I'm, uh, there are a lot of mushrooms that have warts of varying colors, but the thing to bear in mind, if you're looking at a yellow mushroom with warts, the warts on uh, Amanita uh, Flavo Rubens, the yellow blusher, are gonna be yellowish and it's really cute. It oftentimes will also become much more uh, pale in color, but starts out a really beautiful chestnut brown. Okay, I swallowed a bug or my hair. I am rusty at making videos. This is the fourth year I've been running this channel and um, I have to make a decision of whether I'm going to edit that or just admit that I am human and uh, inhale grass. I haven't decided what I'm going to do. I'm going to return to this yellow blusher that gives me so much delight and less ambiguity in my decision making. Okay, so we were talking about uh, yellow warts that are very powdery. We also have, as I mentioned, that partial veil that leaves a beautiful ring on the stem. And then at the base, you have this sort of bulby, uh, but not very large bulb. And the thing that's really tricky about this particular mushroom is Amanita muscaria and a lot of its relatives have a ring of tissue that's sort of like at the top and there are a couple of sort of rings of it um, as you sort of descend into the, the substrate or the soil. And so sometimes, as you can see here, you have a little bit of yellowish sort of uh, zone, you know, around uh, the perimeter of the mushroom. And so occasionally that is something that people get uh, baffled by. But really, if you want to know if a mushroom is a blusher or not, it really is a matter of looking at, uh, you know, it's sort of coloration as it takes damage. This is a perfect example of one where it's like, okay, all the warts washed off and we have a beautiful sort of uh, a partial veil that's left here and these white gills are uh, very distinctive for um, a lot of mushrooms in the Amanita genus and so it's very you know very helpful to know your white gilled mushrooms and there are some very dangerous white gilled mushrooms but uh, one of the things that you know if you get your hands on some blushers and you have some old ones usually as they uh, mature and start to sporulate or take damage they start to turn that mahogany color as well and as you can see you have a stem that's got a little bit of ornamentation in some cases here this one's got some nice sort of stretch marks. I want to conclude by showing you a couple of the babies of this uh, Amanita Flavo Rubens. Oh, no, I'm just going to show you one because it's in perfectly good shape. And I think 
It is the best mushroom I have found in 2024 so far. Uh, well worth inhaling some grass uh, while trying to make a YouTube video. Okay, so Amanita Flavo Rubens and a lot of other blushers. Another thing that I love about them is that they're sort of slender and dainty compared to some of the big chonky Amanitas that we have. And this is a really good example of what they look like when they're just coming up. And you can see this, uh, you know, little zone eight thing. Oh, and that's perfect. Often you'll see just a little bit of damage, you know, a bug or uh, something else has damaged this sort of slightly bulbous base and you get the mahogany red wine action. So I hope to be able to uh, share more mushroom videos soon including a uh, sort of an update of a comprehensive how to do some mushroom hunting and uh you know life lessons in trying to keep up with taxonomy as a hobbyist all that fun stuff but in the meantime it is on in raleigh north carolina and the surrounding uh southeastern united states we have chanterelles we have a lot of hedgehog mushrooms uh, busy times, and so I'm, I'm hopeful that you get lots of rain, I'm hopeful that you find a billion mushrooms, and I hope we talk again soon.